my today's topic will be about ETA and cloud and starts with a rhetorical question is it time for ETA to level up to the cloud? let's see some facts about the cloud and ETA technologies and by the end of this presentation we will all know the answer first of all we need more CPU power AZ and uh, SOC design grows, complexity grows at unprecedented rates which means that the infrastructure that is ready uh, at a company sometimes it will be not sufficient in, uh, in order to continue developing new products some figures from Intel at a paper that was published in 2013 it was that a uh, hundred percent increase happened on computation requirements and storage requirements raised from 100 gigabytes up to 1 terabyte for mask synthesis per complex integrated circuit and all this happened in a period as you can see in uh, 5 years when we change technologies EDA infrastructure is limited CPU memory data and center space is limited a company has inve invested in such infrastructure and uh, when new requirements arise, it cannot scale up, it cannot further use and invest more power. Also in the design, sometimes unexpected delay and unforeseen bugs happen. This means that a full regression test must happen to all design aspects, which sometimes may have uh, the bad effect of missing the deadlines, the time to market. And of course, for startups in the design domain, sometimes they cannot afford the upfront investments in computational power. So, the key point is that we need more CPU power. Design teams need more CPU time. So, in this uh, presentation, my agenda will be the following. We saw that there is a great need this is the CPU requirements, the increasing CPU requirements. There are solutions. We are going to see some. One of these, as you can imagine, is the cloud. The cloud carries benefits, but also some drawbacks. Many applications are already in the cloud, and we can further pinpoint to EDA application, electronic design automation applications. We are going to conclude, and of course, we are going to see some takeaway messages. We saw the problem. It, it is uh, the ever increasing computational requirements. Let's see the solutions. One solution for a company when it needs more power is to not do anything. It's just uh, use whatever is available, which means that sometimes may miss some deadlines, sometimes may deliver the product on time, but it's not 100% uh, uh, sure that it will meet always the requirements. Another solution is what the big companies, the vendors of IC design, is the over-provision of resources. This means that they have spared some servers, they don't use it in the day-to-day -day business, but in case that uh, some bugs are found, then are these resources are put to use and they are uh, fully utilized. Of course, if we see uh, in, a, in a period of time, we can see that the over-provision means low utilization, which is very expensive and only few players on the design domain can afford. Of course, some, some companies that have many projects, they can spread these uh, investments over to many projects. Another solution, which is for small startups, of course it's not a solution, but uh, it's a typical case, is the under-provision of resources. This means that they have only some limited uh, CPU servers, and uh, of course they are always 100% utilized, and most of the time they miss the deadlines. So what we can see that companies require scalable because the requirements are growing, so we want uh, our infrastructure to support these growing requirements. 
and flexible on demand when we need computing power we can get this computing power we need predictable and accurate baseline resource provisioning in order to further have uh, the cost and uh, um, uh, the cost measurements of our project and of course cost effective this is uh, an easy solution the solution is the cloud so what is the cloud it's a term that gained great popularity in 2006 by the Amazon company. Of course, it's not so new term because in 1965 in the Western Union they were talking in the paper about a system that provided remote execution of some business models. Cloud can be divided into three aspects. The first subject is software as a service. So we, we can rent or sell software in the internet. Another is platform as a service. A company can rent a platform in order other applications to be developed on this platform. And of course, infrastructure as a service. Cloud is not a, a, a nice term and some people say that it's time uh, for this term to be abandoned because Cloud is not a computer, so uh, cloud actually is the provision of software and hardware with a producer billing plan. So another, a better term has to be invented. For the time being, we use the cloud. Cloud, many people say it's a new paradigm shift. We are, we are going to get back at this uh, in the next slide. In the cloud, somebody can buy instantly compute power when it needs. Uh, for example, uh, in the, their project uh, they need to have a, a number of uh, extra servers to run some verification tests, then you can buy this extra computing power without buying a complete server. You just go to the internet, you press the buy now bu button on a, a provider that sells computing power and you buy it. The cloud abstracts all available resources. The CPU, memory, software, you don't know what is the underlying hardware or software. You just execute your application. And it's very important, especially for startups, that the cloud shift, in, shift investments from capital expenditures, which is the upfront investment that a company has to make in buying, uh, let's say, a, a, a data center, servers, personnel, and so on, to operational expenditure. So, pay as you use this equipment, which is very good for startups. Requires, of course, high speed internet connectivity, something that in, um, uh, in most parts of the world that we are living, European and the USA and Asia, exist. Of course, in some areas like Africa, they have some problems and they cannot use um, the cloud so efficiently as we do. Cloud computing, of course, is not for everyone. It's better suited, as you can see, for small startups uh, that they have not established an infrastructure to use, uh, to, to use on their projects. Cloud is no, uh, in, it's not a new idea. As you can see, back in the 60s, we used to have the big mainframes, terminal, uh, terminal lines used by people to compute on the server some projects. Then we moved to the PC era, uh, 80s, 90s, to a network era where we can use uh, the local area network we moved uh, to the wide area network, grid computing, and the idea of cloud was born, which means that we use our equipment as a terminal to a mainframe or to a number of mainframes, we don't know, to execute remotely some code, which seems like the old-fashioned traditional way of connecting to a mainframe. Of course, it's not so simple because now the cloud has many servers, has abstracted the CPU, the requirements, and so on. But it's a similar idea. In the ADA design, the requirements are huge. For example, 
on uh, for the verification steps, logic verification, time verification, and physical verification, we can see these numbers, which means that are very time consuming. For example, here we have up to 100 CPU years. So this means that if we use 100 CPUs, it will need one year. And uh, we can scale up by adding more CPU power and decreasing this number. For this reason, for example, Intel has over uh, 100,000 servers running all these steps continuously. The process is not a straightforward, so we go from HDL to synthesis to place and root extraction of the mask and go to a foundry. Bugs are found in every step of the process and this keeps repeating itself. It's a big problem. And sometimes extra CPU is more desired because it means we may lose money. For example, in a usual project, in the first phase, we spend most of the time in debugging. After some time, we reach a phase we, that we need more simulation to verify the complete system. This means that the time to market, which is at this point, is increased. It will be much better if we could meet the time to market in a sooner, in much, much sooner. This means that we need more power. If only we could put more power, more computing power in the simulation phase where the simulation dominates, then we could meet this time to market. And why time to market is important? Because time to market means money. Per perhaps we all know this graph. This graph shows that if a product is delayed, has a delayed entry into the market and means the golden point of time, then the revenues are much lower. Here we can see the area behind this curve, which is translated to money. It's, it's, much, it's much smaller than the area when the product is on time. We can see that there is a lost revenue to delay. People may say that, okay, companies, they don't lose the deadlines. It's not correct. A survey, a current survey of the company Arteris shows that 11% of products in the design team are usually out of the deadline. They miss the deadline. And as you can show, missing the deadline means putting money in the drain. If these companies could use extra computing power, they could better, uh, they could better use the equipment to meet the time to market and of course they will, they will have greater benefits. The cloud is here with some benefits. First of all, the IT support is done by the vendor. The company does not need to invest in servers, in administrators, in uh, paying the energy bills of the equipment. They just need to buy the cloud, to buy the infrastructure from the cloud. Backups are done automatically. Uh, they are in instant and up and running, all this equipment. There is redundancy. And this means that in case adverse uh, circumstances do happen, like earthquakes or so on, because the data and all the uh, software is on the cloud, it can be used in other places. So it means business continuity. There is no need for upfront investments and easy to scale. Cloud, you can see it has benefits. Why it has not been embraced by all vendors then? Because large companies have established IT infrastructure, have large server farms. And this means that they have already the infrastructure. It's pointless to buy more cloud, uh, cl cloud resources. Companies want to leverage their investment. Big companies that have already invested want to use their hardware because, as we all know, if you have a car, it's better to drive it than take a taxi. Another problem is the transmission of data. We saw that some physical masks consume up to one terabyte. And this means that if we want to modify these masks, we have to 
to perform large data transfers. Finally, another key point that in, in every survey uh, that is done about cloud application is security. And what people say, lack of security. Cloud seems to be secure. It seems because, for example, big companies uh, are certified by various security standards. For example, Amazon is certified by these security standards and operation standards. And protection of this data is very important because if somehow the data is lost, then the, this will hurt the reputation of the company. But it's not so easy for some big companies to use other companies because the IP, the design of these components is sensitive and they don't want to lose this because it will mean lose money. Of course, in the past, every major vendor had a fab to construct their own ICs. Now, there are only a few major companies and every fa because every fab costs some billions of dollars. A number of non-EDA applications are already on the cloud. We can see that the market trends is, is, is growing and uh, on uh, 2016 it's projected to be almost 200 billion dollars. So there is a great potential here. Some parts of the EDA are good for cloudification, that means put on the cloud. For example, batch jobs uh, and uh, processes that require high computation power. Some are not, some of the EDA domain are not good for candidates for cloudification. For example, the early stage of IC design, sensitive design issues, and so on. I search the cloud uh, thoroughly to find what is uh, the state of the art now in EDA tools on the cloud. We can see that most companies, Synopsys, ANSYS, SciCAD, Cadence, Nimbic, and so on, provide already EDA solutions. Most of these solutions are for verification and simulation and analysis. You can use these companies. You can go and, uh, for example, the, in the Tina Cloud, which is a security simulator, you can buy cloud access for $299 per year, where the local software requires a, an order of magnitude uh, in dollars in order to buy it. There are some free also uh, sites that, pro that provide uh, EDA functionality from the cloud, for example, EDA Playground, iVerilog, and uh, also from the Greek institutes. In my research team, we have implemented some uh, tools on the cloud. For example, we have uh, already made available a distributed compiler and simulator, which can be downloaded uh, for your own personal cloud, but can be used online. We have another tool for soft core configuration, and um, generators for HDL models, for IP blocks like uh, residue number system, FAMA, others, all these uh, are, are tools that are available on my uh, laboratory web page. And uh, of course, we keep researching on such apps, aspects. Further adoption of VDA in the cloud will, will happen when economics permit it. Not all parts of the EDA design flow is on the cloud, as you can see. The best uh, thing is a blended solution where we use local execution and cloud. It's something logical and achievable and we can see it in the future. Of course, some things are required like technical readiness, legislation, co corporate readiness and business readiness. So what are the conclusions? First of all, cloud is all around. We can use it either in our typical office application, for example, even Gmail is considered a cloud application. We use the cloud every day. Cloud increases productivity. It allows us to connect from any place, anytime, to our application, to our files, to our software and use it. Of course, some people say that it cares burnout. It means that uh, if you connect uh, all the time, if you are connected all the time, it means perhaps working all the time, and there is no free time anymore. Cloud adoption of VDA is still very low, but we can see that in the future this may change. Some emerging trends 
it's uh, I'm going to focus on the European Union that is uh, developing a legislation standard for cloud computing in the digital agenda 2020 and in every panel discussion of the DAC conference where there is uh, a cloud survey people agree that eventually all EDA tools will move to the cloud but they are skeptical to when from one to eight years so some takeaway messages for EDA vendors putting their tools on, on the cloud it means new business models and new ways of uh, having some money new money opportunities also another uh, another model is to provide free or low cost version of their tools from the cloud but charge on their hardware so they will sell hardware and hardware uh, will make the most uh, money and profits for these companies as for us, uh, for EDA teams, individual designers the new shift in the EDA design will give flexibility in freedom working anywhere, anytime with workstation independence we have to educate uh, ourselves, we have to be prepared to decide when we can move to the cloud and what we can move to the cloud. We have to use the local resources, what is available for interactivity and cloud for CPU hungry operations. And of course, cloud usage is growing. We have to learn to explore the cloud and we will benefit because let's not forget that it's always sunny above the clouds. Thank you.